Hi everyone, my name is Orla. Welcome to my channel. In this channel I read short stories for children and adults who are interested in them. In this video I'll be reading another great story from Girls Who Slay Monsters Daring Tales of Ireland's Forgotten Goddesses by Ellen Ryan Illustrated by Shona Shirley MacDonald this is a great book. I've read a lot of stories from this book, as you can tell. So, get cosy, cuddle down, and we will begin. This story is called Era, Fola, and Banva, and they are the namesakes of Ireland. This great illustration is of Era, which is the Irish name for. Ireland. So, Era, Fola and Banva were the three daughters of separated parents. Ernmas, an outer world goddess, and Delvat, a giant underworld demon who took the shape of fire. Ooh, interesting parents. Era, the eldest, was most like her mother, with willowy beauty and the ability to shapeshift into a majestic bird. Fola, a muscled giantess, was a fighter like her father. Banva was unlike either parent, with her great wisdom and talent for playing the bugle horn. Growing up with divided parents was difficult at times. The goddesses spent weekends with Delvat at his land of lava, but some of his demonic neighbours were jealous of Era's beauty and often tried to eat the girls. Things were not much better with Ernmas in her magical forest. Young gods made fun of Fola for her unshapely body and brutish behaviour. But the goddesses fought back. Once she threw two of the bullies so high into the sky they didn't fall back down for days. Though she was the one who got into trouble. Another time, when Era tried to defend Fola, she also caused a stir. Era appeared graceful, but when she became angry, her body burst into flames, just like her dad. Quiet Banva was the best at blending in, but she hated to see her sisters struggling. So one night, after a tough week with the bullies, the girls made a plan to escape. We can't live here in the outer world a moment longer, Era said. Let's move permanently to the underworld, where Fola can be happy. I can't let you do that, said Fola. There are no skies down there, and as a shapeshifter, you should be free to soar like a bird. Well, if we can't live in the outer world or the underworld, wise Banva said, we must go to the mortal world. Fola's jaw dropped. I could never live with ordinary people. They've never seen a giant like me. But Banva laughed. Don't worry. Plenty of giants have travelled those lands before you. We could find somewhere private to live, where we can always be ourselves without being judged. So it was settled. The goddesses took a magical flying ship and sailed up into the skies, eventually landing upon the mortal world. To their disappointment, it seemed other gods had claimed every inch of land from tropical islands to desert plains. The goddesses searched the globe for a new home, 
but with no success. Eventually, after many years, they came across a rocky island in the watery west of Europe, completely cut off from the mainland, forever hidden by heavy clouds, spilling wind-whipped rain, this appeared to be a godless, barren rock. But what the sisters found there amazed them. The island was cold and wet, but it was bursting with magic. The waves seemed alive here, their roaring boats beating against the cliffs. The air trummed with the sound of butterflies' wings and the hum of hawk moths. Trout trashed in lively rivers, wild boar grunted through the lush wetlands and the soil was dark and rich, giving life, life to cabbage, parsnip, wild garlic and herbs. Even the dense forest heaved with the most sacred of trees, from oak and ash to hawthorn and chestnut, their boughs bent low with berries and nuts. Among all this beauty lived a small tribe of mortals named the Bagmen, who gladly welcomed and worshipped the goddesses with offerings of flowers and apples. The sisters had found the perfect home and life became a daily celebration. Fola bounded heavily over the land, building mountains and lakes with her bare hands. Banva played her music as often and as loudly as she liked, and Eris soared over the country's length and breadth as queen of the sky. They were so happy that years felt like, like days to the immortal sisters. But centuries passed and eventually outsiders also discovered their little island. Thanks to her height, Fola spotted the intruders first. Named Milicians, which means soldiers in Spanish, they arrived in a great fleet of ships on the island's southern shores to claim it for themselves. The sisters were terrified of losing their home, but also angry. We worked too hard to find this place, said Banva, and we won't give up without a fight, said Fola. The goddesses ran to the shore, where air transformed into a bird and flew low across the sea. She was so annoyed that her feathers burned bright with fire scorching the waves as the ocean water quenched the fi as the ocean water quenched the fire a thick mist rose up and engulfed the fleet of ships the milicians cried out in fear and became so confused in the mist that they couldn't find their way towards land the sisters celebrated but not for long the mist began to thin and their determined enemies managed to make their way to shore. Soon they had moored their entire fleet and clambered onto the beach. Maddened, Fola came up with a new plan. She lay down on the very edge of the coastal cliffs, her head towards her head hidden by the trees and blew hard over the ground below. Her giant breath was a whirlwind that whipped the Milicians up off the sand and back into the water. Then she ran further down the island and dove into the sea herself, jumping up and down in the water. She swirled and splashed about to create an enormous tidal wave that smashed and sank the enemy's ships. But incredibly, some of the Milicians still managed to swim back to the shore. The sisters decided they had only one option left. They, pre they prepared themselves to rush down to the beach 
and fight the soldiers in battle. Banva, normally so peaceful and gentle, grabbed her horn and blasted long nasal war calls that echoed along the coast. The surviving soldiers shook with fear to hear such a chilling sound. Their leader, Am Amirgan, shouted to his fleet, Magical forces are attacking us. We have no hope of fighting back. The soldiers were panic-stricken and looked towards Amirgan for guidance. The leader called out over the wind. Although he didn't know who was out there, he asked permission to share the island peaceful, peacefully and live in harmony with nature. I am one with the wind on the sea, he cried out, and the waves swelling. I am one with the stag, the falcon and the sunlit dewdrop. I am one with the rarest of herbs, the salmon in the pool and the lake in the plain. And I am one with any gods who share my fiery passion for this place. The sisters were quiet for a moment. Amurgan's stirring words had moved them. This man was a kindred spirit who shared their love of the land. Perhaps these soldiers left their old, old homes because, like us, they didn't fit in, Fola suggested to her sisters. With that, the wind died down and the sea was quiet. The goddesses allowed the survivors to stay and move inland. They came out of hiding and met the, Millic the Millicent on the central hill of Ushnock in County Westmead, where they could view the entire island. The soldiers were amazed to see such impressive goddesses and instantly fell to their knees in worship. They adored each equally for her unique talents and of course for having the courage to defeat their army. If the sisters would allow them to remain, they promised to worship them and name the lands after the goddesses. The girls accepted. And so the Milicians named the island Era, which means Ireland, out of respect for the eldest sister, do artists call the country Banva in honour of her music and their army call it Fola in honour of her strength. According to ancient myths, many modern day Irish people descend from those surviving Milicians and the country is still named Era after the long forgotten goddess. The end. Another great story from Girls Who Slay Monsters. Until the next one, bye bye.